Hey, welcome back to my channel where I'm documenting the build of a Rans S21. Uh, first, a quick disclaimer. I'm a first time builder. None of my videos are instructional. I'm just documenting my build and commenting on issues uh, that might be of interest. Uh, I'm going to use this episode to update uh, on the whirlwind prop issues that's been developing over the last several months. A, a quick recap of what uh, the issue has been. Over the last several months and maybe a little longer, uh, there have been numerous or many comments, complaints that with the uh, Whirlwind 200 series props that retention bolts have sheared. The retention bolts are the last four uh, on the hub and uh, also that the hub is developed, has developed cracks uh, usually around the retention bolts. Uh, there was one pilot that had commented that he heard uh, a clanking around in the spinner and upon landing one of his retention bolts was banging around the inside of the spinner. Uh, to my understanding, there have not been any catastrophic losses, but certainly the loss of retention bolt, the loss of a blade, prop blade, uh, would result in a catastrophic loss. Uh, two, two recent comments on the uh, Rands forum. Uh, Andrew Barker uh, did an inspection and he found a crack in his hub. Uh, he had a, a factory built 21 with about 87 hours on it. And then Harold Crocher uh, did an examination inspection per the, the service bulletins. He didn't notice anything. Uh, he said he even used a magnifying glass and, and everything looked fine. But then he, tried, he did the uh, dye penetrant examination and he found a crack through the dye penetrant process. So he is suggesting that the visual inspection, which is outlined in several of the bulletins, is not adequate and that you ought to be doing dye inspections uh, to determine if you've got cracks in the hub. So there, there's really been kind of four theories that have been floated out there and it's kind of dwindled down to a, a more common two, I think. Uh, the first of the theories was that the bolts were not being torqued properly. Uh, this has been kind of uh, moved away that the people involved said they're familiar with torquing, they torqued properly. Uh, and that the coincidence that it would only be these hubs that the problem would occur versus others. Uh, so the torquing theory has kind of uh, been dismissed. Uh, the next one is the spinner plate. This spinner plate in here, uh, this is a carbon fiber spinner plate and it goes between the hub and the prop extender uh, and is sandwiched between the two. Uh, some very smart people with engineering backgrounds and chemical analysis that have commented on this. Um, there's two sides to it. Uh, the theory is that the compression of the carbon fiber uh, between the two uh, will, as it compresses, will change the torque setting on the bolts. Um, it's been used by other applications other than the range. Doesn't seem to be a problem. At a minimum, uh, a lot of pilots are sanding down the back side of the spinner where the carbon fiber uh, bumps are per se and they're smoothing them out which in theory would create less compression. Uh, this also doesn't have a lot of traction but probably a good idea if you've got one of these spinners it doesn't hurt to sand down and take away that as a possibility. Um, uh, the last two items which seem to be more uh, more possible to the problem uh, is these retention bolts uh, on the outside are undersized and under torqued. They're 3 8 bolts. They're the same. You can tell if you've got one of the older hubs because all the bolts are 3 8 and these outside bolts uh, are torqued to about 30 pounds. Uh, it's probably, Whirlwind is probably recognizing this is an issue as their new designed hub has 7 16 bolts on the outside which are which are torqued to about 40 pounds. Uh, so Whirlwind is even acknowledging or at least changing the design of the hub to address the, the bolt size. Uh, the other, and I think this is the most uh, accepted issue, is as these two halves are torqued down, there's supposed to be a small gap in here after it torques down on your prop blade. There's supposed to be a small gap. 
People are reporting that there is not a gap and that this is creating a stress against the two halves and that's creating the cracking around the retention bolt. So that appears to be uh, the most common. Whirlwind is also in their, in their new hub has milled the halves so that they, when they're clamped and torqued, even with the 40 foot pounds on the 716 bolts, there is a gap uh, in, the, in the hub. So that appears to be the significant issue, uh, the bolt size and then these two halves coming in contact after they've been torqued. Um, Rands did put out a service alert on March 21st. They basically just said inspect immediately, inspect frequently, and look for cracks um, and check your torque. Uh, Whirlwind on April 21st, a few days ago, uh, they put out an updated uh, service bullet. I want to make sure I've got it correct. Uh, and they, they covered four or five points. First, they, uh, they acknowledged that they got the reports uh, on the cracking. Uh, secondly, they put out an inspection process, which is uh, now, and I think it's every 25 hours continuously, which is a lot of inspecting. Um, third, they've also said that uh, after you have torqued these bolts eight times, the bolts and the washer should be replaced. And basically the bolts get retorqued fairly frequently. I haven't even flown my plane yet and I think I've torqued them twice. Uh, the first time I was gonna start my motor, then I had a problem with my, my electronic ignition. So I untorqued them, took the blades off, um, put them back on. I shouldn't have torqued them the second time, but I did. So I'm already two into the eight. I haven't even come close to flying the plane. The other thing is being if when you repitch your prop, uh, saying you pitch it for, for stole or back country and you want a power pitch, uh, then you finish your, your stole work and you want to do some cross country work and you repitch it. Uh, it's very conceivable that these could be torqued over and over for inspections. You got to take everything apart. There's torquing. So they're recommending replacing the bolts every, and washers uh, every time it's been retorqued, every eight retorques. Uh, then the, uh, the other beautiful thing Whirlwind is doing, and I say that with sarcasm, uh, is they will resell you a hub because of the fact that they're cracking and you may not feel safe in them and they're requiring these frequent inspections because they do crack. And so they'll sell you a new one for $1,100. Um, oh, plus $35 for the bolts. So rather than just giving you a set of bolts because they've got to get changed or, or giving you a new hub because these are poorly manufactured or engineered, uh, they'll sell you 1100 But their new service bulletin says that from one year from the date of the service bulletin, they'll give you a 25% discount on the hub. Now, I don't know about a recall on hubs and airplanes, but certainly on any vehicle I've had that's been recalled for a problem, uh, they've replaced it for free. Uh, the fact that this is a safety issue, a significant safety issue, and there's known cracking, known problems, not just perceived it could happen, it has happened a lot, you would think they would just give you a new hub replacement. Or at a minimum, replace them at cost, their cost. Uh, one of the commenters on the forum who's familiar with this type of work said this is probably $300 worth of work uh, to, to produce one of these, give or take. That's, that's, you read on the forum, may or may not be true. Uh, but to sell a $1,100 hub with a 25% discount, uh, they're still making profit on these hubs from their problem and theirs. So you've got to buy two, two $1,100 hubs to get a working hub. Uh, I won't do it. Uh, I think it's a, it's a travesty what Whirlwind has done. And now Whirlwind got purchased by hard sell, purchased by hard sell. So I'm sure it's hard sell management making all the decisions in this. Uh, but I think it's, it's absolutely horrible that they aren't being more receptive and more willing to fix this problem. Uh, there's been a lot of owners that have commented earlier that they called Hartzell and called Whirlwind. They weren't getting return phone calls. They, Hartzell and Whirlwind were just hiding their head in the sand about the whole thing. Uh, at Sun and Fun, there's a lot of people that went up to the booth Hartzell had there. The guys there didn't know anything about it. They didn't offer to get back to them and research it. They just said, we can't help you, we don't know. Um, I'll tell you right now, I will not be pay paying for another Whirlwind hub. Um, I just, I will never buy another hard seller Whirlwind product as long as I live. Um, their customer service and their attention to customer safety is abysmal. So the, what are the options? Uh, Steve Cox, who many of you know, if you're watching my YouTube, you probably watch Clear Direct. Uh, Steve does a fantastic job with his videos. Uh, Steve is working with Cato Props. Apparently there is a Cato hub 
that will fit the whirlwind prop so you don't have to buy the props also that's my understanding check it out for yourself uh, my understanding the hub is around fifteen hundred dollars uh, Steve is also working with Cato on testing one or two of their props to determine if they will uh, provide the performance numbers uh, that the Rams community is used to, and Steve will hopefully report on that shortly. I'm holding off on anything. I'm months away from flying, so uh, I'm not in a huge rush. I'll use this, this hub to do my, my dry runs to start my engine. Uh, but I won't fly with it. Uh, I'll wait till uh, till there's a resolution. But I most likely will will go with the Cato prop. It it seems to get a lot of good reviews. The people over there apparently are fantastic to work with. Um, so I'd like to support uh, a group that supports the flying community. So uh, that's kind of the update for now. Uh, there are posts coming up on the forum quite frequently. Uh, join the Rams 21 forum if you want to stay attuned to the to the posts. And thanks for watching. And with that, dream it, just build it.